Hi, in this Affinity Publisher tutorial, we're going to continue exploring calendars. So this is a little bit different calendar layout than I made last week, which was essentially a printable calendar. And I'm not going to go through all the steps because that tutorial really took you kind of through A to Z through my methods of how I make a single master template that I can make calendars for any month perpetually, like any year, any month. And so the summary of that is basically you need to create a master for every day of the week. Um, so Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, because each of those can have the first of the month fall on it. So we have seven of them. So the Sunday master starts with one. And then we have a Monday master that starts with one, a Tuesday master that starts with the first, a Wednesday master that starts with the first of the month, etc. And then I duplicated all of those so that I could have one set for each day of the week being the first, that the 31st uh, was the last day of the month. And then I could have a second set of masters that the 30th was the last day of the month. Now, February is its own thing, so that I just manually adjust. But if you want to see that in more detail, please watch the calendar tutorial that I recently published um, that will walk through that more specifically. So for this one, I want to focus on kind of just a different layout and a different kind of calendar. And, um, and particularly this little part is uh, a little bit different. And so this is something that I am referencing a little promotional calendar that my dad got and he gave to me. And it's the kind where you've got a bunch of little cards that sit in this tray. So the way that it's packaged, it comes looking a little bit like a CD. So this is all closed. And then you fold the lid over and then there's a little kind of lip here where the cards sit in. And I will try to remember to take a photo of the actual calendar that I'm referencing so that you can see what I mean here. But this is what you would look for if you're looking for a case, if you want to sell these or even just make it for yourself. Calendar jewel cases is what they are called. Now I've measured the cards in the jewel case that I happen to have, and those cards are 90 millimeters. So that's the size that I'm going to make this. So I'm going to do file new. And um, I'm going to make sure that under layout tab, my document units are in millimeters. Now, if you're measuring in something else, then use a different document unit. And then page width, 90, page height, 90. Margins are pretty small. So what I did with this one is I made sure the margins were linked by clicking in this area. And then I could click on any cell and using my arrows up or down, could kind of get a preview of how much margin. So I settled on four millimeters as being the right amount for what I wanted to do. Next, we're going to create the calendar. So I'm going to go to the table tool and draw out the approximate size of my calendar. And then I'm going to click in these double arrowed areas and I want seven days of the week and then click in this one. And I want six rows because I'm going to have my days of the week, Sunday, Monday, etc., up here, and then five rows for the numbers. All right, so that looks good. And then I'm going to highlight this first row by clicking in this gray area of the first row. And up here in the justifications, we'll center align it both horizontally and vertically. Now I can come in here. And just type in, since this is a very small calendar, I'm just going to type in this. And actually, I'm going to take away that H so that they're all even. All right. So if you wanted to just number this by typing and tabbing, you could do the same thing. You could set this all to be center aligned in both directions. I'm going to at least center it vertically. But in the last video, I did show you a little trick for quickly numbering calendars, and that is to open up your paragraph window, which you'll find under Window Text Paragraph in uh, Affinity version 2.0, 
or two point whatever. Um, and then when you have all of these cells selected, expand the area that says bullets and numbering and go to type and do the one, two, three, four. Now that put a period there. So I'm going to go here and just delete the period that's between these two little pink areas. Stick my cursor behind it and click enter to kind of make it stick. Otherwise the period seems to go back. Now when you do this method, unfortunately it doesn't want to justify the number. So I tried it and it just didn't make a difference. So I found a little workaround. And so I actually kind of like it when these little problems happen because it helps me discover new things and new ways of doing things. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use the cell insets to adjust it and really just kind of eyeball it. So I'm going to take all the single digit numbers and I want them to line up under my days of the week. So I will click on this row to highlight it. And then I am going to unlink these. So this is linked. This is unlinked. And I want to go just to the left box and there's little arrows up and down here. And I'm just going to click up until it looks centered. And I actually think three millimeters looks pretty good. Now, one little tip, you want to make sure that your calendar is roughly the size that you want it. Because watch what happens if I were to make adjustments to the size. It's no longer perfectly lined up. So let's undo that. So get the calendar grid the size that you want it first before you start adjusting these insets. All right, so I've got two more numbers here that are single digits. So I know already that three millimeters works well. And so I'll just type that in. And then... Um, Actually, I've, um, I'm going to select all of my double digit numbers. I can't do these ones because, uh, actually, no, I can. You know what? I'm going to select all of these. Hold Command or Control if you're on a PC and just click to unselect those single digit ones. All right, and then we're going to go to the left again and see what makes it line up. So that's pretty close at two millimeters, but it's not quite. So let's try 1.8. And I, I, I think that looks pretty good. So let's go with 1.8. Now I'm looking at July 2024, which starts on a Monday. So I'm going to go and delete this one up here. And that automatically adjusted everything over by one. So now we have a Monday start. And then I'm going to come here and delete or backspace in each of these cells to get rid of those numbers. All right, so now what I want to do is get rid of the grid lines. So I'm going to select the whole table and in the table tool, which you'll find over here, at, or you can go to window table. I'm going to go to uh, stroke and fill right up here. And I'm going to click this third one that says all. You can see what's going to be affected because it kind of bolded all the lines that will be affected. And so now I'm just going to take the stroke off over here and now it's all gone. Now I'm going to click on it and highlight just this first row by clicking in this gray area. And then I want to find the one that has the bottom line. So these are all kind of little graph paper icons, but one of them or more is bolded and it's kind of hard to see, but it also will tell you which line is affected if you hover over it. So I'm going to go to the bottom one. I'm going to put the stroke back onto that one. And so I can just kind of watch it grow. And I think that's pretty good. So we will stick with that. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is add the month. So I'll use artistic text tool for that. And we'll do July. And we'll center it. And I have the snapping tool on. That's what's bringing up those guidelines as I try and center it. And one thing I forgot to do is to do this on a master. So let's just copy all this. Go over here. And we'll 
say, uh, so this is a Monday start with 31 days. And we'll pop that over there. And then we can just um, go back to this page and just highlight everything and delete it. Okay, so now we're working on a master. All right, back to the artistic text tool. In the reference that I'm looking at, there is the year over in this corner. And I'm just gonna move that over a little bit. And so I'm just gonna make it bold because in my reference, it's a little bit chunkier. Let's actually bold this text as well. Remember these are small, so it doesn't hurt to be a little bit bold. <laughs> All right, um, in my reference, there's a logo over here. So what I'm gonna do for that is go to my picture frame ellipse tool, hold shift so I get a perfect circle, and just create a little picture frame that later I could just put um, a company logo in. That's optional, but it kind of balances out uh, the 2024 on this side. All right, so the last thing we need is a picture frame. So we'll go ahead and draw that out. I don't want to have a stroke on my picture frame, so we'll just take that off. Okay, and so now let's come over here and we will apply our master to that. And now I'm going to work on this particular page. Click on this frame replace image. And I just want to show you, I went into Adobe Firefly, uh, which is an AI art generator. And I just said sunflower in a field at sunset, comma painting. And then um, I made sure that I was landscape. It gives you different choices for aspect. I could also actually do widescreen, but um, I've already downloaded this picture. So we'll just walk through what I did. So I did landscape content type art. And then um, for reference, I browsed the gallery and I found this reference. And so it added both art and that style reference here. You could add other things, effects and, and various things, but I just pushed generate and I actually liked this one. So I downloaded it and that's what we're going to work with. So I'm no longer on a master. I am on uh, a page here. And so um, I'm going to select this and open it and it pops it into that frame. I could scale it, but I want it to just fill and I can also kind of adjust it if I want, kind of like that. So I scaled it by clicking on the image and using the slider here. And then I adjusted its position by clicking on the picture until these little arrows come up and then I can move it. All right, so then you could just continue adding pages and you could, let's just uh, create another one. So what would we want in August? Maybe uh, field of corn. Let's try that. And I kept all my style references the same, so hopefully it should be in a fairly similar style. Let's keep in the windmill. Um, let's see what happens if we say no windmill. Doesn't want to do that. Um, let's pick... Kind of like that one. I actually like all of them. These turned out quite nice. Just save that. And then I can click on this one, replace image through the field of corn. Now, like I said at the beginning, you will want to um, create all your different masters first before you start creating your actual calendar. Um, and there's just one more thing I want to show you. So as I was editing this, 
it wouldn't let me move August. So I'm going to go to this master and edit attached. And now I can pick this up and center it again. And then when I'm done, go up here in the green bar and say finish. And so that way you can create new calendars for all the days of the month, put different pictures in each one of them. All right, so I hope that's not too confusing kind of doing an abbreviated um, calendar tutorial like this. But like I said, I have two other videos here on YouTube where I go through how to set up a perpetual calendar master template. So um, go ahead and watch those if any of this doesn't make sense because it will become clear as you watch those ones. But this is just a different style uh, with kind of a mini calendar with the numbers. Oh, we messed up the... Why did this one get messed up? Okay, let's fix that real quick. Um, I think we wanted three for that one. There we go. Good, and that fixed it in, in both of my layouts too. So I really like this uh, little project and uh, I, th I think I'm gonna actually make this for myself because I'm actually liking the paintings as well. So um, have fun with that calendar layout and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.